Arhaba, welcome. Today we have an interesting session and something that, that has crossed our minds at some point in our lives. Why are my duas not answered? So we will have a look at these, um, some of these points that why do we think our duas are not answered? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, Qala rabbukum udu'uni astajib lakum. That your Lord has said, call upon me, I will answer. So first of all, this statement in itself is negated. Why are my duas not answered in itself is a wrong statement. You can say that when we need to understand the wisdom behind delayed response, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we feel is delayed. All right, because it is possible that the dua might have already been responded to, but on a different tangent that we are not aware of. Right? When we uh, let me just talk about the story of Yaqub alayhi salam when he lost his son. The father was not an ordinary father, he was a prophet. Had he not prayed for so in the morning and evening askar for the wellness of his son, for the love between the family. For the afia of his son, of his most beloved, uh, that he knew from his uh, dream that he was also to be a prophet maybe one day. And all of those duas, but he lost his son and he did not know where he was. But he said, Inna ma ashku basi wa huzni ilallah. And after that, he said that I only complain of my pain and my, my suffering to Allah. And I know about my Rabb what you don't know. What did he know that others did not know? Many wisdoms, right? He knew that mutawakkilun for one. That you do the people who are believers, they do tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So we will just look into these. Number one. So what are some of the wisdoms behind delayed response? This was the story of Yaqub. And what about the story of Bibi Hanna? Who was Bibi Hanna? Grandmother of Isa alayhi salam. She prayed for a daughter. Uh, sorry, she prayed for a uh, son, but she had a daughter. She did not know the wisdom behind it. So she followed her nazar and she gave her to the mosque to study and to become a scholar. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom was beyond the wisdom of any man, any person. It is beyond our comprehension. Allah had plans that she, it was beyond her imagination. From her progeny would be a line of prophets, right? She would be the grandmother of many, many, many prophets to follow, right? What about the story of uh, when, we, uh, when we, these are qasas actually, because these are real, of Ayub alayhi salam, right? He, for years, he was sick. But look at his patience, look at his sabr on his own dua that he did. He read that same dua, Anni masan yabduru wa anta arhamur rahimi. We don't see any complaint. We don't see any issues. We don't see any anger. What did he do? He was just telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how he felt. And he was calling upon Allah and he did sabr on his dua. So the sabr has a huge palate. Right? We only talk about sabr, sabr in difficulties, but we need to do dua maybe on our, uh, we need to do sabr on our duas also. And we need to have tawakkul that I have asked the all wise and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do what's best for me. But we become impatient. So when we see all these stories, story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah told him to go and uh, call on the mountains of Makkah. There was no one there. And he was just followed and he made that dua. And after years and years, now every person that does Hajj and Umrah becomes a Sadqah Jariya for Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. 
right? And it is wadi zi ghairi zarain. It is a land that grows nothing. And look at the baraka of the place because of the dua of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, which did not make sense to him at that time. But he believed in his Rabb. So we need to understand, number one, that Allah is Malik, Al-Malik, and he is most wise. Man has no right over his creator. Usually we as human beings, we focus too much on me, myself, and I. My rights, what are my rights? Uh, or they focus on themselves. They want to examine themselves and they want to say, why am I not given this? Why is that? I mean, you are not, uh, uh, Allah does not owe you anything. He is your creator. Allah has rights or more rights over you and you do not have any rights over Allah because you are a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we are focusing too much on what we want, we forget that Allah's choice is better for us and uh, is undoubtedly has more wisdom than the choice of the servant. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who al awwal wal akhir wal zahir wal batin wa huwa bi kulli shayin ali that he is Awwal, the beginning, he is the end, he is what is known and he knows that he is the seen and the unseen. Knows everything. And he is most wise. Surah Hadith. So we need to understand that we do not know the holistic result or the, of the effect of the dua. Number two, it could be a test. How can your a dua be your test? Now when we call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for a dua and the dua is delayed, what happens? We are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fine, we're getting up at the hajjur, we're doing it in sujood, we're doing in uh, all the namaz, we're doing everything, but dua is not being accepted and you're at it, you're at it, you're at it, but dua is not being accepted. What do you think? Number one, Allah does not hate you and Allah is not punishing you. This is the first thing, maybe Allah is angry with me, maybe Allah, is, uh, uh, Allah doesn't love me. So these are the first thoughts that come to your mind. And we become impatient. Right? Uh, dua is also becomes your trial uh, and it becomes your test because when we feel the pain, we become, uh, we become impatient. We want to move away from it and it becomes unbearable for us. But this is where we have to show sabr. This is where we have to show our tawakkul that uh, Allah wants to see our patience because that is why he has put you through that trial to see what uh, what you do with your iman. Are you doing sabr? Are you uh, razi? Razi means that you are accepting the fact that you have given all your, uh, uh, you know, all your duas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever happens is going to be the best for you. This is what Allah wants to test, right? Just like Yaqub alayhi salam. And these people did not know the end. They were not alimul ghaib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alimul ghaib. They were humans like us. But they did the tawakkul. The sahaba, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 13 years of torture in uh, Makkah. Uh, and the sahaba, the people who believed, they would say, Mata Nasrullah. When will the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come? And Allah says, Ala Nasrullahi qareeb. That beware Allah's, uh, uh, Allah ki nasr, that means the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is close. So how close? 13 years? Right? 17 years for uh, Ayub alayhi salam. Some say 70, 70 years. Uh, till the time uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, from a child, he was a grown man. He became a king. He did not see his son. So uh, the goal of a woman is to show his tawakkul on his rub. Right? Tawakkul ala Allah. And then we, we've, I've already always, I've already talked about sabr. So we lose sabr on duas because we should understand that this is a test. Number three, the matter might bring evil. Now this is very interesting. Allah is most wise. His hikmah encompasses everything. So it might be that the dua is delayed or not granted till it is suitable for us. Um, for example, someone is dying for a spouse, for themselves or for their daughter or for their son. After some time, you find out that the person got married, blah, blah, to somebody and was a total disaster. And like, Allah ka shukar that I did not fall into this trial and tribulation. What a disaster it would have been. Or, for example, if uh, you're, we are sometimes uh, looking for admissions, I'm just giving you random examples. And I'm sure every one of us 
has experienced this in some time that we are desperate for a dua and we do it for years maybe, months maybe, days and days and the dua is not accepted and we see the hikmah of it after years that oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but that dua did not get wasted. Right? We will talk about that. How did Allah respond to that dua? So, um, for example, uh, I was saying, yes, for a university, for example, maybe, God forbid, there was an accident that is supposed to happen at that point in that university while your child is there or some bad company, the child will fall for something bad, bad company or whatever it is, some shar attached to it. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala evades that and your child does not get into that university. Alhamdulillah, that means uh, that uh, some evil has been evaded. And this is a believer of a moment because the moment has made the dua. And if it doesn't happen, then you believe that there is khair in it. That is why we do dua is sahara. Some people, they pray for the beauty. Uh, maybe the beauty becomes a fitna for them. Some people pray for power. Some people pray for money. But Allah knows that whatever blessing that you are asking for could be a fitna or a trial for you that could lower your uh, levels with... Uh, of in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or maybe you would use it for the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so you are not granted that that dua but we because we are not uh, uh, you know we, we don't know the future and our thinking is very limited we just willingly want to focus on that same dua not to say that we should not ask for the dua this is to think that this is a negative feeling when we attach to our du'as that why is my du'a not getting answered? So these are the thoughts that should run to you through your mind to bring you, to, to keep you focused and to help you maintain that positive attitude that you are building that connection because shaitan doesn't want that connection of you with your Rabb. Because du'a is the most powerful connection. It is worship, right? Um, because Allah has said, those that do takabbur, from my worship, I will enter them into Jahannam, it is said in the Quran. And in that ayah, the reference is to the dua that the worshipper makes. Right? So, I, I said it in the beginning of, the, of this dua uh, series that dua is worship. So, beware dear students and dear sisters. Don't get angry or curse or complain your qadr for the matter that you so much desire because that same matter might be the very cause of destruction, right? Amazing is the matter of the believer. If the dua is accepted, alhamdulillah. If the dua is not accepted, alhamdulillah. So in both hands, it is a win-win situation, right? Then we come to something hated sometimes brings good. Now, whatever the slave detests is better for him than what he loves. For the love will distract him from worshipping Allah and whatever he detests will cause him to increase in his dua and bring him closer to Allah. And this happens to all of us. When we are given something that we love so much, we get so involved in it that sometimes being human beings, we are not given, we are not giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the importance or um, uh, the respect or whatever the ta'zim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves. And we become very involved in it. But sometimes when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just pushes us, pulls the rope a bit, then we are all shaken up and we start calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that increases us in our du'as to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That increases our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that you not having this right now would bring you closer to Him. Then if you were to have it, you would be uh, totally at peace and you would think Allah is very happy with me and you would not have that connection with your Rabb. Mostly our du'as, what do they do? What is, when something you don't have, what does it motivate you to do? You slog for it, you want it more, so you just, you know, you keep asking for it, you keep uh, connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you keep doing du'as, you are motivated to do more salah, you're motivated to do more dua, and this is the shahar dua this month of Ramadan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that, right? Um, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran regarding jihad, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْعًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ That maybe there is something, there is some shay that you hate, but it is good for you. خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْعًا 
and it is possible that you uh, love something but that thing is shar for you but allah knows and you don't know and surah nisa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the men that sometimes in your even for men and women we might find something bad in our spouse maybe and but that spouse in itself is goodness for you so seek the goodness instead of pointing out the badness so we need to look at the big picture the matter might bring evil so that is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not accepted it we remember the story of surah kahf when that child was murdered right by um uh, by khazar alayhi salam so the thing was that allah knew that this child would turn out to be shar for the parents so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took that child and blessed them with a uh, with a uh, with a solid child Number five, it causes the believer to reflect on himself. Very much connected uh, to some of the previous uh, points that I uh, that I discussed. You see, when when does delay become a blessing? How does it become? How does delay in your dua become a blessing for you? Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever reflected on your life that you know for this dua, I because of this dua I became closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and because I wanted this so bad. I did this, 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 and it brought me closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So that dua was actually a blessing for you, not being accepted or the delay that it there was, because Allah wanted something good for you. Now, how does a dua or delay in the dua become a blessing for you? Is that the person examines? Ab dua nahi kabul hori, right? You're doing the dua in and out. It's been months, maybe it's been a year, maybe years, and you're wondering why is my dua not being accepted? so you reflect you reflect on your quality of life is there something that i'm doing wrong that maybe i shouldn't be doing then you start focusing on your sins you start focusing on where am i earning the money from you start focusing on the quality of your dua maybe i'm not using the names of allah maybe i'm not very uh, humble in my approach uh, maybe i'm not i maybe i should do it in tahajjud maybe i'm just doing it randomly maybe sure, maybe i should get up for tahajjud so you start reading tahajjud just to get your dua accepted then you examine your evil deeds you try and say you say okay you know what i don't do this for the pleasure of allah i will do this so he accepts my dua and you you change your lifestyle you do something good you want you are motivated to do good deeds and you you know this starts a whole purification process for yourself a whole cleaning experience for yourself and this will only happen to a true believer because he is contemplating and he is thinking how many times have we seen people change because something some trial tribulation had happened to their child or their spouse or someone in the family and then they reflected on themselves and their lifestyle they left a lot of things and they changed because the, their duas were at that time not being accepted and they wanted so desperately for that dua to accept so this is also the wisdom of allah subhanahu wa taala because allah knows that you will be granted but he wants to raise your levels in jannah he wants to bring you closer to him and when when we beg allah subhanahu wa taala and when we are kneeling down in front of our rab humble that we have left our bad habits uh, and, and we do correction and remember we talked about the story of the three men that they were talking about their good deeds they used a wasila and they said allah accept it so these are all motivations and they build a stronger bond with allah subhanahu wa taala than before right so uh, and then we have number 6 the dua might already be have must must have been responded to but we don't know about that how does that happen number 1 it is in a way that we don't understand or see or uh, we don't comprehend it uh, number one for example maybe there was something evil that was going to happen but because you did so much dua then the evil was averted right so the evil is averted and you don't even know about how many every day in our life allah subhanahu wa taala takes care of us in so many ways that it is beyond our imagination that so so much could happen but allah subhanahu wa taala saves us because of maybe our duas right then allah subhanahu wa taala will give you your recompense for those duas the reward which will be more beloved to the believer than the duas being accepted in the dunya how beautiful is that we cannot imagine i always get goosebumps that the people whose duas were accepted would pray that 
I wish we, our duas were never accepted in the dunya. How, that's how big the reward would be in the akhira. And then number three, so every time we make dua, know, know that it is adding to your good deeds. So it's a win-win situation. You do the dua anyways. It's accepted. Amazing. Alhamdulillah. If it is not or delayed for that time, Alhamdulillah. But dua should carry on. Number three, Allah blesses him with something that we did not ask for. Right? So for example, uh, now there are so many things that we can think of. If someone is not that happy with a spouse, for example. Some habits of the spouse, not happy. Maybe relationship is not that wow. But then Allah blesses them with beautiful, solid children. So they find peace with children. All right. Sometimes people are sick, but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the risk of taking care of that sickness. Not everyone can afford uh, the best quality medicine. Someone uh, uh, suffering from uh, personal suffering, uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses them with a very nice uh, um, children that take care of them. So be because of their sickness, their sins are forgiven and they're elevated in paradise and also the children that take care of them or the spouse that takes care of them is also elevated uh, with their levels in Jannah and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the mashia, this is the understanding, this is the wisdom. Uh, Allah says that in uh, Sri Yusra, that with every hardship there comes ease. With every hardship, not after. Right? It's ma with. Then, interesting, but we don't, we don't want to go into this very deeply because uh, we, it's a matter of qadr, right? Dua might be weak. Now, Ibn al-Qayyim says, who is a very big scholar, he says, dua and your qadr or your divine decree, they work um, together. Now, this can happen uh, in ways, for example, if your qadr is stronger than your dua, then the qadr will take over and the dua will not be accepted. Maybe this is one of the reasons there is delay in response. Number two, and sometimes the duas are not accepted also, right? Number two, wh what will happen is if the dua is strong and, uh, and then the qadr will be, uh, then the dua will overtake the qadr, right? So whatever was destined for you, it is said that nothing can change destiny or qadr except for one thing and that is dua. So never leave dua. Number three is that if both are equal, then they will prevent each other from happening. So they're like heads on with each other. So what is the lesson here? Keep asking for the dua. Keep doing the dua, yeah, right? Um, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the ummul kitab. And there is no one to ask him, why did you erase this? Why did you put this? This person didn't deserve it. We, we usually think that we become the judges, you know, that, oh, he's this and she's that. Why is she given this? Why was she given that? She doesn't deserve this. No one can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah likes something about you, he will give it to you. Kun fayakun. It's done. Then we have the manifestation of Allah's names and attributes. All of what we have talked about is a manifestation of Allah's names and attributes. All of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can withhold some ni'mah from you because he is al-mun'am or he can give it to you. He is al-mani. He, uh, he is the all-powerful. He is al-aziz. He is al-hakim. He has the wisdom. Uh, he has the justice. He, he is al-hakim. He gives out of his generosity because he is Al-Wahhab, he is al Karim, right? So when we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it is the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Manifestation means then it will be according to the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will be according to the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Wahhab, then according to manifestation of his names will be there and then he will bestow it according to his wisdom. Not on what you think is right for you, but what your creator thinks is best for you. What we need to understand is we have to have more tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than we have on ourselves. Our decisions are our decisions with a little mind. Allah's decisions are better than our decisions for us because we don't see the future. Then we see that in dua is the perfection of worship. And inshallah, we will do this in the next session. That how does, how do we see perfection of worship in dua? 
how do we get this perfection of worship? And we will do it with, uh, uh, with an example of a few role models. Now, what is the conclusion you tell me from all of this? Keep making dua. Uh, keep making dua at all times, all the time. Never give up. Stay positive. Um, never be negative. Don't let the shaitan stop you from making dua. Istighfar is dua. Alhamdulillah is dua. Tasbih is dua. And then you uh, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for even a shoelace. The Sahaba would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if they needed a shoelace. Why? Because it is your constant ruju, constant, your heart is constantly engaged with your Rabb. And that is worship. When your heart is constantly present with in front of your Rabb, it's right there. So how can you be indulging in anything else that Allah doesn't is does not get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is the purpose of our creation, is to know our Rabb. And then you have unfold all these different awarenesses that you have of yourself and your Rabb when you contemplate on these things. Then also the conclusion would be, I feel that the uh, Ibn al-Qayyim said that the, our du'as are the fruits of our garden. Right? They are the fruits. So what is the garden? The garden is the, it, it has the soil and the right environment that we give it. We need to check ourselves first and uh, to see what sins are we involved in. What are what is preventing the water from reaching the garden? Uh, what is our uh, source of income? What are our sins? Am I doing something that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is doesn't like? Uh, being hasty about with our du'as, being impatient, complaining, asking for something prohibited, right? Um, uh, and leaving the etiquettes of dua, inshallah, that we will be. I will send the slide uh, slides to you. Uh, there is really no explanation uh, behind the etiquettes of dua. Even if you read it, inshallah, it is just a summary of all the things we have discussed till now. And if there is something that you don't understand, we can always discuss it in the next session. I will send them because uh, uh, apparently we don't have uh, so much time as to uh, do those. Are there any questions? Yes. Dua is the outcome, right? What kind of a dua are you making? Remember in the first session I said be humble, right? So if you're not a humble person, if you don't know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, how, your dua will be different than a believer who knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? The kind of dua you're making, are you using names of Allah? Are you humble in your approach? Are you doing it in sujood? Are you begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you totally in that state where you understand that he is your Rabb and you are the slave? Totally showing your neediness. Are there any online questions, Leah? No. How do I make dua? Uh, there is a hadith uh, that uh, at the day of resurrection, I just said that uh, these du'as will increase your, uh, in your, will be uh, added to your scales, right? And when the people see the, the, re, the reward of the du'as not being answered, the people whose du'as were answered will pray that we wish that none of our du'as were answered in the dunya. That's how big the reward is. You see, sometimes things are so big that they cannot be put down in numbers. Like the reward of uh, uh, keeping fast, not mentioned. The reward of this is not mentioned because it is going to be beyond our comprehension. Right? I hope that makes sense. This is going to be the last question, right? Yeah, that's a lovely share. So you see, you realize when you reflect back, you realize and what does this do for a believer? How does that help? Motivates us further to do more, right? Subhanakalama wa bihamdika shadu ala ila ila anta. Okay, wasn't it three questions? Okay, so I can take more questions. I'm still online, right? Okay.
can you uh, can you say the question again if you are asking for something this is your personal choice right we're just talking about a situation where when you feel that your dua your dua is delayed right so this is just to keep you on a positive mindset this is not to say that you stop asking for the dua and you leave it and you should not tell Allah, if you think this is good for me, then you do it. This is not a way to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm just saying that you should you should ask with a, a lot of need, like you really want this. And to, and to like I said, one can do istikhara. And also one can say, Allah put khair in it. Put khair in it. I really want it. I'm really desperate for it. Is, is that, maybe I'm not uh, getting your... All right. So the thing is, this is a personal journey. Everyone has a different desire. Sometimes you are asking for the dua and you feel it's not being accepted. Then you ask for something else maybe or you keep persistent about the same dua. It's a very personal decision. What The focus of today was that don't be disheartened and feel that my duas are not being answered because they are. Right? That's what the focus is. It's not whether... Uh, Allah accepts it or not, Allah will accept the dua uh, in his way that he thinks is perfect for you. Mm. Yes, that is what we do in Istikhara, right? Then we, that we say if there is shar, please Allah, you know, make it not happen. If there is khair, make it happen. You can say Allah put khair in it. We don't say that if you feel fine. That's what I'm saying. We don't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you feel fine. This is what you want. Uh, it's a casual thing that, you know, if you feel fine, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a power over everything. It's not like, yeah, that's okay. That's fine. Right? Any other questions? All right. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just the screen.